close off the session. Joining me in studio now for a closer look at the equity space is Kyle Burgess from Nedbank Private Wealth. Kyle, thanks so much for joining us today. So that overall, uh, the day that was, uh, let's take a look at the JSC because holding up relatively well with industrial stocks in particular providing the impetus. So your impressions of how we've started this week? So a pretty positive start. I mean, half a percent higher, especially after the gains that we saw last week were it's fantastic. But of course, a lot of it in NASPERS, and I suppose that's been really the story of the year. Um, so in December, I think we we're trading at 2,000 rand a share and um, breaking through 2,800. Um, so, you know, reaching fresh record highs, holding up industrials, and, you know, it makes up such a big part of our market that it's, you know, holding up the all share index as well. We had one headline come through today. Caxton's attempts to hike fine on NASPERS from 1 million to 40 million rejected by the competition tribunal. How much of the positive that we saw on NASPERS today related to that? Uh, so I think that it might have been a small amount. I mean, in, in NASPERS life, uh, 40 million rand is probably quite small. Um, but I mean, last week we did see um, regulators or censorship coming through in China, um, blocking WhatsApp, and of course the alternative um, being WeChat, which uh, sits on Tencent's mm -hmm. platform. Um, you know, so that, that really has boosted Tencent, and we saw that up in, uh, in early trade this morning, up over a percent, um, and that filtering through to, through to NASPERS, which is, which is great. Yeah, on the flip side, we had the resources sector coming under pressure, in particular uh, the platinum space standing in the spotlight, and that as Anglo-American platinum's yeah. results are seemingly disappointed. Uh, maybe not so much the results, but the fact that we haven't seen a dividend uh, being paid and it not likely to be paying a dividend until uh, the end of the 2018 financial year. Are you positive on Anglo-American Platinum and where it stands right now? Because if you look at overall production, it's up. Costs, uh, I mean, they've got a pretty strong handle on that. Uh, net debt dropping to 5.9 billion and that from 7.3 billion. So in some respects, the boxes are being ticked. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the company can, you know, as we were discussing earlier in, in studio, there's only so much the company can really do to uh, improve its own situation. At the end of the day, um, you know, being a platinum or being a single commodity miner in South Africa is a very tough uh, proposition, especially when platinum prices are really, you know, below $1,000, which, you know, it makes it very difficult. Um, you know, but that being said, uh, you know, if you do have an increase in, in consumption of the actual metal in China in terms of consumers there, uh, possibly an uptick, um, you know, with AutoCATs, uh, you know, being more positive, mm -hmm. um, you could see the platinum price recovering. So if you were going to be in the platinum space, I think that Amplats would be the stock that you'd want to be invested in. Um, but given this environment, um, you, you know, it's difficult to justify. That being said, they've got a wonderful asset in um, Juan Laquena, which is, I mean, they make up 40% of the platinum supply um, globally. Um, and that being, a, you know, a wonderful asset for them. So if you wanted to be in the space, uh, you know, this is a great stock to be in. Yeah. As you highlighted, though, it's a company that's pulling all the, the levers. It has the ability to pull on right now in order to navigate a very tough economic climate. A company that seems to be scoring some of its own goals though, a PPC, its shares uh, slumped 12% at a point, I think it ended the session about 9% softer and this on the back of its CEO Daryl Castle resigning and no explanations given. Yeah, so it's a, it's a difficult one. Um, I, you know, I think we're getting quite used to be seeing these big moves in, uh, in the likes of PPC. Um, unfortunately, these sort of boardroom um, issues that are coming to the fore, you know, three years ago, Daryl Castle took over the reins and, and really stabilized the company and it's going through a very difficult time. I mean, it's not a, it's not a nice time to be selling, um, you know, cement is, you know, global growth is, is, is fairly low, especially in South Africa. SANAC regions also also struggling a little bit. Um, you know, there's increased competition in the sector itself. Um, you know, last week we saw um, a teacher and Bueni, the former Reserve Bank governor, um, resigning as well as a non, uh, sorry, as a non-exec independent yeah. director or independent non-exec director, um, and now the CEO. So, um, you know, you've got to question what's happening. Is it is it on the back of, uh, you know, possibly a disagreement in terms of the AFRISAM deal? How's that coming along? Um, you know, so I think a, a lot of market participants will be watching quite closely because this is a stock that, you know, has potential to you know, potentially re-rate at some point. Um, so I think a lot of guys watching it at this oh, point. Well, this it's uh, very surprising that they're keeping mum uh, in terms of why this has come to the fore because uh, what it does is, as you say, fuel a whole lot of speculation in terms of uh, the potential mm. reasoning. Uh, let's take a look at Group 5 because that a company in the spotlight as well after its board shake-up. Are you more encouraged by uh, the kind of change that's happening on that end? 
So I'm not really, you know, I'm not, I'm not too sure if I have a proper handle on it at mm -hmm. the moment, to be honest with you. You know, if you look at the business as a whole, they, they still seem to be struggling, in, you know, in a, in a lot of the sectors. The share price has come under increasing pressure. And it's never nice when you've got a, you know, Alan Gray holds, I think, 25% of, uh, you know, of the shares. Um, they're pushing for, for certain changes. It's never nice when you've got management and the board sort of disagreeing on, on the direction of the company. Um, you know, you, you don't want to say it, but you, you'd hope that they're not taking their eye off the ball. Um, uh, so, you know, being in the construction engineering space in South Africa at the moment, um, it's not something that I'd be particularly keen on, uh, you know, to be quite honest with you, until, until such time as these things are, are resolved. Yeah. Let's take a look at the retail space because uh, holding up quite nicely mm. and that on the back of uh, the uh, Saab's MPC decision last week to cut interest rates by 0.25% uh, within uh, uh, retail. We've got uh, Spurs update for the year ended June coming through showing a 4.2% rise in total franchise restaurants sales and it highlights the fact that this has boosted uh, been boosted specifically by its international operations uh, what's your view on spur amidst a very challenging economic climate right now so I've been I've been quite a big fan of spur the, the actual stock for for quite some time now you know they've come up with um, really something that's quite innovative in in the saw grill that you know I think when they took it over there were six mm -hmm. uh, you know six or three shops or they had six shops they were going to cut it down to three they've ended up expanding um, you know considerably and, and it's done particularly well well, they've also come out with Rocker Mamas, which now has um, over 50 stores, if I'm not mistaken. So they're expanding aggressively into uh, you know the burgers yeah. and beer market, which is which is great. So I like I like the stock, and I think they posted in this environment um, you know a pretty solid set of numbers. Well, we didn't get into AVI, uh, which was also out with a trading update mm. today, showing full year group revenue up 8.2%. Uh, also encouraging, but uh, providing us a nice segue into what is your stock pick at the moment. Yeah, so I, I'm quite keen on Naspers. Uh, not Naspers. I'm keen on Naspers, but not as my <laughs> stock pick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite keen on Woolies as my stock pick. Mm -hmm. So I think if you look at the overall retail space, it, it certainly offers offers value there. You know, highly cash generative businesses um, that uh, you know offer offer nice dividend. That being said, the, the really the environment that they're operating is is not fantastic. So we've seen a, a you know quite a bit of a re-rating since mm -hmm. the MPC lowered interest rates by you know a quarter of a percent. It's quite small, but it does it does go a long way in a in a very sense, uh, sentiment driven market um, to boosting these shares higher. So I'm quite keen on on. On Willys at the moment, I think we'll see a nice recovery in David Jones. Might take a bit longer um, in the Australian space, and um, hopefully, food can play a, a more important role um, in the Australian market and really, really see that uh, share coming back to to its previous highs. And Willys, the top performing stock on the top 40 index today, up just over two percent. Uh, let's leave it there, Kyle. Thanks so much for having joined us in studio this Thank evening. You. Kyle Burgess is with Nedbank Private Wealth.